Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 12 of my 3D printed R6 droid, which I've got just here. I've done quite a bit to this so far. Last time I did some remote control hacking. Look at that. So I've got different functions on a menu that can control different things. So if I go and scroll down on here, I can make all of the lights turn red on the head just there. And if I do another function, I can make them turn blue. And I've got lots of menu options on an LCD shield from Adafruit stuck on an Arduino. And some buttons I can press for quick shortcut functions. And those inject analog values straight into the two spare analog channels on the remote, which I can read at the other end. So I've broken out about 40 digital functions in there to control lots of features. So this time we're going to try and get some sounds into the droid because it's a bit quiet so far, apart from the motor noise. And probably 3D print some other details to add on. To make the sounds work, we're going to use a pair of Adafruit 16 Meg Audio FX boards. So these are really useful boards. That I put one of these, um, the 2 Meg version, in my Mr. Fusion project to play music when you open the lid. Um, there's quite a lot of functionality on them. They've got a micro USB connector. If you plug this into a PC, it turns up as a flash drive. So you can just copy the audio files onto it. So it'll play OG Vorbis files, which is a bit like an open source MP3, or WAV files. They've got 11 trigger pins, and depending on how you name the tracks that you copy onto it, they will trigger when you ground a pin. So they do a version of this with um, an actual jack on it for plugging into an amp and so on. They also do a version with an amp on board you can plug directly into speakers. This version has neither. It has a line out on the pin headers, which is fine because that's all we really need this time. You can also control these over UART serial, so I can trigger these remotely from my Arduino over a couple of wires. The plan is to have one of these to play soundtracks, like the music from Star Wars and so on, and the other one is going to play R2-D2 sounds, and I'll be breaking out those sounds onto the menus that I've got on my remote control. On my remote control I've already built two menus, one for actions and one for sounds, which I can scroll through and then execute a command which outputs the analogue value directly into this potentiometer. The buttons do the same, you can see a number appearing on the screen there, and that gives me a value on this potentiometer. So I can use, for instance, these two buttons. We'll be skipping through the next R2-D2 soundtrack. And then I can use my sounds menu to play a number of different actual music tracks. I'm going to need an amp and some speakers to actually play the sounds through the droid. And um, in a noisy exhibition hall, you'll be surprised how loud you need that to be to actually be heard. So I'm going to use these active speakers I've had hanging around for a while. These have got an amp in. They've got a volume control on one. So one is um, the one with the amp and the wire links to the other one, which is just an, a passive speaker. And these are powered conveniently from 12 volts. Um, it says 1.8 amps. I guess that's if you're blasting full volume. They've got their own power switch, so I can mute the droid if I want to. And um, they're pretty lightweight, and they've got actually quite small speakers in. So the plan is to take these to pieces, get the speakers and the amp and everything out, and then I can go and um, make some 3D printed mounts to mount those in the base of the R6 droid. They've conveniently also got uh, two inputs, one input and one aux, so I can just feed those directly from the two sound boards. There we go, so we've got um, various parts there. We've got the, that's the volume up and down. That was the power switch, which turns it on. And obviously we've got the connectors there as they were with the wire that goes to the other speaker. So that will get resoldered to the board um, and the power in there. So that's quite a good little module. I've stripped all the other cables out, leaving us with two speakers that we can mount in the droid. Here is my much smaller speaker design, which is made of three parts. So we've got um, a grill on the top here, which obviously the sound will go through. And this is a solid part, but we're going to use the slicer settings to slice it with no top and bottom layers and only a very low density infill in honeycomb. So in fact, what we get is just a honeycomb with lots of holes in it. The middle piece is the bezel, which holds the speakers, and that's got four holes in. And it's the same four screws which hold the grill on, which actually hold the speaker on. And then, of course, we've got the back piece here, which has got a flat on, so it actually sits up this way, facing out of each side of the droid. Got a hole there to run the speaker wires in, and, um, of course, this is just big enough to hold the back of the speaker. So we're going to print those out on the Lulzbot Mini, and then we'll fix them all together.
All the parts are printed there. We've got the nice back of the speaker there with its flat on so it's got a flat base. And I've made those quite thick so they're nice and sturdy and they don't rattle or distort with the sound because the speakers are quite loud. So we've got the bezel and the grill there. And the screws for the bezel go through and actually hold the bezel, hold the speaker in the bezel and hold the grill on. And that fits quite nicely into the back there. So we need to stick those together, which we'll do with acetone to make a solvent weld because all the parts are printed in ABS, so they stick together with acetone. And then we need to make a mounting up that fits in one of the front panels for this and the Adafruit soundboards. Before we go and mount that up, I just wanted to show you a bit of prototyping about how I'm intending to drive both the soundboards from one Arduino. Uh, we'll look at the code in a moment. Basically, the Adafruit soundboard library for driving this over UART serial technically only supports one board. What I've actually got here is two boards mounted on breadboard along with an Arduino I'm using for testing. Um, and you can probably see the light flashing on them alternately, this one and a second later this one, which means it's triggering sounds from them in turn in one loop. I've got my um, speaker set up here, which are in their nice boxes now, and I've got the innards of the speaker there. And if I just turn this on, we should be able to hear two different sounds playing, which are lightsaber sounds, and those are playing on each board. So I've just got the two audio cables there bodged into the in and the aux on the speaker, which I mentioned. So that seems to play quite nicely in a loop, and I can play a track off either board. Um, what I'll just point out before we look at the code is I'm using one wire which is on pin 6 and that is actually linked to both of the serial ins on each board. So I've got them both on one serial bus and uh, but I'm still triggering a sound from each in turn. So let's have a look at the code and I'll show you how I did that. Here's the Adafruit learning system page for the soundboard. There's various types of these, as I mentioned, um, but they all work in the same way. So the premise of this is that you plug it in as a USB device and it turns up as a flash drive and you can copy files to it. It'll play WAV files or OG Vorbis files, and I've used a piece of software called Audacity, which is free to convert my MP3s into OG Vorbis. So um, the example here is various tracks, and depending on how you name them, they get assigned to different pins in the very simplest mode. So T00.org would be assigned when you ground pin zero, and that would simply put would play the track. You can do um, other types here, so you can have a, a sound that if you put um, the track name and hold L, then it'll um, hold it while you're playing that or while you're holding that pin low. You can um, have a play next function where it'll play through tracks assigned so you can stack multiple tracks on each pin um, as well as random. So it shows you how to wire up buttons here. The next page in fact is for triggering from serial which is what I'm doing. So we're actually triggering this from a single wire and there's an Arduino library that's free to download which um, has a really great example which controls the whole soundboard over serial through the serial terminal in Arduino. So it actually constructs a whole menu where you can query the board so it will receive and transmit data and you can see what tracks are on there, you can play a specific track and so on. Um, in its very simplest form it's much easier if you know the track name you can just play a single track and you don't actually need the receive and transmit pins, all you need is one wire for serial to transmit, which is what I'm doing. So there's an example code there, it tells you exactly what to do. So uh, basically, we're going to have a look at the code that I've put together. Um, what I've in fact done is named the tracks on each soundboard uniquely. Here's the Arduino code, I'm using Arduino 1.0.6 which works perfectly well. It uses software serial which um, means we can use serial on any pin um, rather than just pin 0 and 1 on the Arduino which are the UART pins. We've included the Adafruit soundboard example and most of this is stripped out of the example code that comes with the product. So we've got some pins being defined there. So transmit and receive are on five and six and reset is on four. In fact, I've only connected six to, re uh, to receive. Um, the other ones I haven't done because I don't care about querying the information on the board or resetting it. The only function I need really is to play the tracks. So I just need to send data to them. Um, there's a whole bunch of other stuff here for initializing the board and so on. And also the software serial begin to actually send commands. But my program is very simple. It's just one loop which plays each track with a delay in between. On one board I've named the track t00.og and on the other one I've named it t20.og. You have to use an 8.3 character format, um, hence the empty spaces here, but uh, basically when it receives 
this command it will play one track and when it receives this command it will play the other and if both uh, of those file names are on the same board they will play off the same board but as it is one is on one board and one is on the other board so uh, when the board with only 20 on receives the t00 command it ignores it and obviously vice versa and as well as ignoring it it carries on playing the track that it's already playing until it gets another valid serial command for a track that exists on that board so that means that I could have the music to Star Wars triggered on one board and straight away trigger an R2-D2 sound on the other board and they would both play simultaneously. I've now attached my boards to this 3D printed stick which fits perfectly into one of the front panels of the droid. So you can see it working away there with the lights coming on. I've now got the volume controls broken out to these two pins and the switch is here for power. This should make it louder and this should make it quieter and that turns it off so I can mute it. I've mounted all of the electronics in the droid now so here are the two Adafruit soundboards and the innards of the active speakers and I've got one speaker there and one in the other side in their 3D printed pods that I've made and I've just hot glued those down for now we'll acetone weld them on eventually but for now they're hot glued so I can pull them out quite easily if I have to but for now everything looks pretty good and I've run the power and data wires around the back of the droid to the two Arduinos so now I've got this power switch that turns it on and the other two switches as I said before are volume so I've now got the ability to play two sounds at once on my remote I've got the sounds menu configured up to play various music tracks and the two red buttons the top one plays the next R2-D2 track and the bottom one is the mute button so if I hit this one have to hold it down for more than 100 milliseconds. See the left hand soundboard red lights coming on each time. If I just hold it down, it will just play through all the tracks one after the other. Can't really see the mute button working until I play an actual music track, so zero on my sounds menu. It's the music to Star Wars. And as I said, I can play two tracks at once, one off each soundboard, so this one still plays R2D2 sounds. And the other button kills everything. So then the next track on my sounds menu is Cantina Music. And again. And that's stop. The next one is Princess Leia's Dialogue. And finally... got a nice rock track to test out the speakers and this is a mix of ACDC and the Bee Gees which you can get off YouTube and these speakers are pretty loud they're too loud really if I turn them right up this is a volume so that's more than loud enough for big exhibition halls the code to make that's uh, pretty simple. Last time I showed you the remote and I showed you changing the LED colours in the displays um, based on the actions menu. I've taken that code out for now and I really, really, really need to rewrite this code for multitasking properly. But for now I've just put the sound stuff in. So this is my normal NeoPixel code that I've had for the last few episodes that's... Um, doing this awful block of code to colour all the NeoPixels randomly which I'll be changing as well. Um, but for now I've added in the Adafruit soundboard stuff and all of the definitions that I showed you in the last bit of code. Uh, basically what this does is reads the PWM values from channel 5 and 6, which are the two channels I'm injecting those analog values into on the transmitter. It's saying for channel 5, which is uh, basically the top red button, um, if obviously if the uh, receiving value is within certain bounds, and this is a PWM value being read from the radio control receiver, then obviously stop all the sounds. Um, if it's the other button, which is the other red button, so if that's within certain bounds, every time you press it, add 1 to this channel 5 sounds variable, which basically increments the track. Um, and obviously if that variable is 1, play the first track, T20 og, 2, play T21 og, all the way up to 30 and at that point reset that channel 5 uh, variable to 0 so next time you press the button it adds 1 to it and plays the first track again so they go around in a circle for the functions for the main music tracks on the other 
Menu is just saying if it receives a value within certain bounds then play the other tracks and of course these names exist on the other soundboard so even though they're on the same serial bus it plays T0 through T03 OG from one soundboard and 20 through 29 off the other soundboard and these are 16 meg soundboards I've got plenty of space to add other tracks um, which I can do so or there's probably plenty of space for up to 100 or more R2D2 sounds and at least a couple more proper music tracks. So I'll be putting all this code up on my GitHub, have a look at video part 7a to find out how you can get all the code for free and all the 3D files for 3D printing as well. I thought I'd like to get some more details in in this episode as well so I'm going to put in the utility arms and the large data slot which is right in the top of the frame there. So these are going to be um, printed in orange to match the colour of the R6 droid. And the data slot there is printed in two halves so that we can print that big overhang and actually have a slot in it. And it may be that um, that can be functioning or it can have some lights or something that scroll along behind it. The arms themselves are also made in two parts so they can be printed flat on the bed and then stuck together and there's a little bracket on the back of the arm which will be for the servo to go and hinge on there to open and close them. The hinges themselves have the servo holders built in and they're opposite pairs because the utility arms face in opposite directions. If we go back to the um, frame diagram here we can see I've got one installed in CAD just at the right hand side of that lower arm. So we'll get those parts printed and assembled. Here's one utility arm on its mount, so I've stuck both halves together and I've got my servo mounted in there. As it is, it doesn't move very far because the servo horn's quite short, uh, but it opens sufficiently to see that it's opened. I don't want it to do too much anyway because it's just about the right height for a child's face, so it'd be quite good if it doesn't um, hit anyone, but it's good enough to pop open. Um, I could make it make a custom servo horn with a 3D printed bit of plastic and a custom link but I'm quite happy with my bent bit of wire for now. I've already done the large data port so I'll get these mounted and we'll see how they look. There we go, all mounted up. As I say they don't open up massively about there but I can put longer levers on them at some point in the future if I want to but for now for the animatronic effects that is probably good enough I would say. Alright that's the end of another R2D2 episode. Next time I'm going to be looking at animatronics to control some of the servos that I've now put in there. We've got two 16 channel servo controllers, one for the head and one for the body. So we're going to look at scripting those up and adding those onto the actions menu as well as the shortcut keys on my remote. So don't forget to subscribe and check back next time for more updates on this project and other projects. Also check out my Patreon crowdfunding campaign which is how all my projects get funded by my fans. Have a look at patreon.com slash xrobots where you can get access to some exclusive rewards including a live broadcast with me and all my digital downloads for free but I will add that I've actually released all the digital downloads for this droid for free so have a look at part 7a of the video for information on that.